Okay, so to end, we are going to go over five different stretches that are really nice, um, especially when we are stuck at home and not moving as much. Um, we tend to get really tight hamstrings and hip flexors um, from sitting around a lot. Hamstrings are on the back of our thighs and hip flexors are right up here, top of the hips. So those two areas tend to get really tight from sitting around, also can get really tight from exercising a lot, ironically, so both can make them tight. Um, so anyways, those tend to get tight. Our chest tends to tighten up. Our necks, um, again, from all of the, the sitting around, lounging, uh, doing more reading, more computer work, more things involving sitting forward even, I would guess stitching face masks um, for the quarantine, if that's something that you're doing. Your neck might be um, a little uncomfortable from that, for example. So um, those things, and then a nice full body stretch, um, we're gonna throw in there at the end, a spinal twist. So I'm gonna keep these kind of short, but I hope that you will do them on your own time and hold them for a nice long stretch. Anything um, 60 to 90 seconds or more is gonna be excellent for a static stretch and will help you gain benefit um, for that muscle after you're done stretching. Anything like 30 seconds or less is going to feel really good and you're going to get some blood flowing in that muscle, but you're not really going to benefit as much from the stretch um, lasting a while. So regardless of how long I hold them, I would like you to make them a static stretch and hold them for at least roughly a minute and a half if you can, okay? Here we go. <clears throat> so we're going to begin with a hamstring stretch. Now ideally, you will have a strap or a towel, so I'll give you just one second to, to grab something that you could use as a prop, even a dish towel. <laughs> you might wanna wash it, but <laughs> a dish towel is the right size. Anything accessible, a hand towel, um, a resistance band, if you have a set of resistance bands at home, or a yoga strap like this. We're gonna put it um, underneath the bottom of the feet Okay, and you can hold this at about um, the ball of the foot or just under is a nice place to put it. Feet are about hip distance apart, and we're going to pull back and sit tall. I love doing stretches for the hamstrings with the straps because here we don't have to round forward and, and stress our lower backs. We can get the nice hamstring stretch, and in fact a really intense hamstring stretch, without compromising um, our spines. You can also do this on just one side, okay, holding, sitting up tall. If you feel that you need a little bit of support, the strap can take, go into one hand and then you've got that free floating hand to help support your posture so that you can stay nice and upright the whole time. So here we're, we're really protecting the back, foot flexing in towards the body. We're really protecting the back versus a stretch like this, which can also feel really good but <clears throat> might not always be the best, especially when we can um, reap benefits like this, okay? <clears throat> you can also add in a little twist while you're getting this hamstring stretch. So lots of nice variations that we can do. We can lift the leg up slightly for even more of a burn. Lots of good things that the strap or a dish towel or something similar can give us. <clears throat> we can lie down with it. So if we start lying down on the ground, again, we simply loop that strap around. The other, the leg that's down can go straight or it can go bent. I guess I took the wrong <laughs> direction. I think I just got decapitated right there. <clears throat> now you can see my head. Not that it really matters to this exercise, but leg can be bent or straight. We can flex that leg in towards our bodies here, please do keep the head down because keeping the head down will ensure that we're not um, placing um, stress on nerves in our lower back by arching up at the same time. We want to keep our bo upper body relaxed here. We can go across the body slightly for a little bit of a different stretch, moving through to our IT band just a little bit. Back to center, we can go a little bit wide to target down through um, the adductors and our thighs a little bit. So you can see how there are lots of different nice modifications we can do for a hamstring stretch. Next, we're gonna go for a hip flexor stretch. So I'd like you to come into a kneeling position. 
on the mat to begin. One leg goes in front, the other leg behind. And you're gonna lean forward with your torso, or with your hips, I'm sorry, and back with your torso. So that the leg that is getting the stretch right here, I'm gonna switch so you can see a little better, this right here, is really stretching out. You can do several things here for an even deeper stretch. You can simply lift the same side arm up, lean back, now squeeze through this glute and you should feel the hip flexor um, burn in a good way, a good stretch a little bit more. And we can go across, so a little side lean to help that piriformis open up even further. Okay, so those are all different ways that you can help stretch out the hip flexor. You want to make sure with the hamstrings and the hip flexors that you're doing both sides. So again, hips go forward, lean back. Make sure your hips are squared forward. That will help to deepen the stretch. One arm can go up. You can add a little back extension with a side bend. Lots of different options here. And you can do this as well from a standing position. Okay, so if it doesn't feel great to, to do that with your knee on the mat, then simply stand up and you can, you can take it from a standing position, perhaps with your hand on the wall if you need a little bit of support. So speaking of hands on the wall, <laughs> if you go to a door jam or even just a wall and grab a hold of it with your palm, I want you to rotate away from the wall for a chest stretch. Try to roll your shoulder back, squeeze between the shoulder blades like you would in that rotator cuff exercise and the reverse flies and the rows. You get a nice stretch right here through the chest, that, this area that tends to be extremely tight. Again, you can do this on both sides. Rotating, just standing in a door jam. If, you have a, if you're in a smaller doorway, you can take your hands wide on both sides, just pretend I have some walls here and I'm stepping through the doorway. That can also be a really nice stretch. And you can take your arms kind of up and down and hold them in the door jam at different angles. And you'll really feel a lot of different muscles, um, different angles of the muscles in the chest release. Next for a chest stretch, I wanna show you a little <clears throat> gentle movement that can feel really good. Take that strap or the dish towel or whatever you have, the band, hold it um, on a diagonal angle down um, from your body. <clears throat> Hands are wider than chest, than your chest and wider, I'm sorry, wider than your hips and wider than your shoulders on the strap and you can have just a little slack in it. You're gonna lift all the way up and over. See, I needed to take mine even wider because my chest is tight right now. <clears throat> So we're gonna pull all the way up and down. So this is a nice way to loosen through the chest and just open it a little bit. If that feels really difficult or if you get stuck, then all you have to do is release it and bring it back to the position that you started in to be able to, face, to, be able to go through at least part of the range of motion until you can work your way up. If it feels really tight, you can give more slack Okay, so you can walk your hands further out or in according to how tight your chest is and how much movement you need. You can take that same strap or towel behind your back now. So you don't have to start with the exercise I just showed you. And you can do a nice chest stretch here. Shoulders come back. So it's not enough just to hold it here. We really want to accentuate this chest stretch by, round, um, by bringing our shoulders back instead of rounding them forward. And from here, we can even lean to one side and to the other for a little bit more limbering and to get the neck involved just a bit. So next, we're going to do a neck stretch. Speaking of the neck, let me get my hair, my very long, unruly hair out of the way here so you all can see. <clears throat> now, the neck, we, we, th we all know, I'm, I'm sure, the next stretch where you can simply lean to one side, which is great, lean to the other side, take the neck back, take the neck forward, and then you can do rolls. And these, I mean, these are all wonderful. We all know these. I feel like I was 
taught these in um, elementary school gym class as we were warming up for the physical fitness exam and stuff. So we have lots of different um, neck movements just from those simple stretches that we've been taught and those are wonderful. I want today to teach you one that you might not be as familiar with. So go ahead and take your right arm up, take it behind your back, hold on to it with the opposite arm and you're going to pull, okay? So if my right arm is behind my back, my left hand is gripping it, I'm pulling to the left. I'm pulling from the, in the opposite direction from the hand and side that we're stretching. So I'm pulling to the left, and I'm stretching my neck to the left. So right hand behind the back, pull to the left, neck goes to the left. And you'll really feel this one down through the neck in a really lovely stretch. And from here, we can tip the chin up and down to really accentuate it. And we can even do something that a lot of people giggle about, but you're, I'm the only one getting embarrassed here because I'm doing it for you. You're in the safety of your home where nobody can see you do this. Take your jaw, take your teeth, and push them out like an underbite. So I'll try to hold that for a minute for you. Okay, so as, as I just did that, like my ear popped. I didn't even know my ear needed to pop. But <laughs> it's a really incredible way to get the, the masseter muscles and all the muscles involved in chewing um, and jaw tension. Um, it's a wonderful way to get them and the neck muscles involved because they're all connected. They all work synergistically for lots of things throughout the day, talking, um, eating, etc. So a really nice thing to do is to do this stretch tip the chin up slightly, and give yourself a little underbite. Push that bottom jaw forward. And wow, it feels amazing. Might look really strange, but it feels phenomenal, let me tell you. Okay, here we go. So opposite side, left arm up. Pull to the right, pull to the opposite side. Head goes to the right, so left arm. Pull to the right, head to the right. Same thing here, you can tip the chin up and down, feel that nice neck stretch, and you can give yourself that funny little underbite. And probably will recognize for the first time just how much neck tension you might have before you even realized you had neck tension. So <laughs> welcome if you're just realizing that you, you have, actually have some tight muscles in there. I think everybody does. So that is um, a nice neck stretch. I love that one. I love teaching people that. I feel like it's such a game changer for releasing tension up there. Um, before I go on to the last stretch, just as an aside, um, you do carry so much pressure in your jaw and your mouth. So even just massaging right here um, where, your, where the edge of your jaw is, um, massaging around your temples and your forehead, um, the top of the scalp, it's incredible how much this can begin to release through the neck. Um, something else that I've noticed is that <clears throat> tight feet and tight lower legs, so down through the calves and the shins, can also um, result in tightness up the body, even into the neck. So if you do all the neck stretches and um, all the right things to try to release up here and you're still not feeling great, um, Obviously check your posture and your seated positions and things like that throughout the day, but then also think about the ways that you can massage um, or use a foam roller or a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball to roll out the bottoms of your feet and the lower legs here, and it can have a nice effect for, um, for the neck. So the last stretch, uh, moving on quickly here, to try to fit all of this in for you all before my babies wake up. <laughs> We're gonna be lying down face up on the mat one leg lifts up and can go over to the opposite side as far as you can reach. Arms can go wide in a T from the chest and you can look over the opposite shoulder. So I know that's a lot of information but I'll repeat it on the other side. This is a nice deep spinal twist. If it feels too difficult to do, um, to do this with your legs straight, you can simply do it with your knees bent. If it feels really extreme through your chest, you can simply place your hands on your torso for a gentler stretch. So we're either a little more folded up right here to ease into it, or we're really wide for that deep spinal stretch right here. 
whatever feels best for you. We're gonna float that leg back up towards the ceiling, releasing the arms. Same thing, opposite side, leg goes up. Let it slowly drop over, hands go wide, head goes over the opposite shoulder from the leg that's extended. And you can just breathe here. This is really lovely. It gets down through the spine, the legs, the chest, the neck. So we're really getting everything involved to end. And float it back up and release, okay? So that is everything that I've got for you guys. Thank you so much for hanging with me through everything, including my mishap with uh, the core video getting cut off due to my husband dropping the monitors for my babies. This is this is the empty room of my uh, four-year-old, the empty bed of my four-year-old who's quietly playing uh, while eating a snack. Actually, his snack play, plate is empty. That's not a huge surprise. He's a big eater, so he's playing quietly while under threats from me not to come out of his room. And then, uh, and then my little one-year-old my little one-year-old is right there, sleeping happily, thankfully. Maybe because I gave him some medicine because he's been teething really badly and I really needed him to get a good nap today so I could film these. So anyway, um, we're, all, we're all getting through it day by day. We've all got our own struggles. So stay positive, friends. Uh, let me know if I can help you in any way. I'm here for you and I wish you the best. Take care.